In this video, I'll cover the two most common mistakes people make in designing with LED linear lighting and how to avoid them. First, let me point out that we'll be talking about constant voltage circuitry, not constant current. Many people don't understand why sometimes you use constant voltage and sometimes you use constant current. It's quite simple. LEDs are constant current devices, so you always use constant current except when you can't. And you can't use constant current when the load isn't known. Environmental Lights is a leader in LED strip light, and virtually always we do not know the load when we design our product. Our customers buy under cabinet lighting that can be linked or extended, or they buy cuttable LED strip. If we're selling a product that is extendable or cuttable, by definition we don't know the load. Therefore we have to use constant voltage circuitry. I made another video on that subject recently and you can learn more about it there. So constant voltage it is. The first mistake people often make is overloading the driver. The second mistake people make is failing to account for voltage drop on long lines. These problems are very different and require different solutions. Many people get them mixed up and think the remedy for one is a remedy for the other. My goal in this video is to help you understand the problems and how to avoid them. This is a constant voltage strip that consumes 80 watts. If I power it with this 24 watt wall wart adapter, it tries, fails, tries, fails, etc. This is called stutter fail mode. The vast majority of wall ward adapters I have seen are designed to enter stutter fail mode, which is what ours do. If I power it with a 60 watt desktop adapter, eventually the adapter will fail, probably fatally, and you have to throw it away, it's useless. Standard practice in the industry is that desktop adapters don't have overload protection. The adapters are well made and they can obtain a UL listing, but nowhere does it say that there should be good overload protection, so it is up to you not to overload your adapter. So how much power do you need? I usually use 25% extra, so I'd multiply this 80 watt load by 1.25, or I'd divide it by 0.8, which is the same thing. And that would mean that I would use a 100 watt driver for this 80 watt load. You might think that an 80 watt supply is good enough, and you might be right. Or you might spend a lot of money installing it in a hard to reach place, and you might be wrong. Life is too short for that mess, so just use a bigger supply and be done with it. One concern I've heard from customers is that people wonder if using a too big supply might hurt the LED strip. For constant voltage strip, don't worry. Look, here I'm powering that 80 watt strip with a 750 watt monster power supply. If the resistance of the load is so high that it only uses 80 watts, no problem, it delivers 80 watts. The other almost 90% of its capacity is unused, it won't hurt your lights. So how do you avoid overloading the driver? use a driver that's at least 125% of the rated load. Simple. Next, how do you account for voltage drop? Why should you even care? Well, if you don't worry about this, your single color strip could be much dimmer than it ought to be far away from the power supply. Your red, green, blue, or RGB strip might even show the wrong color. Fortunately, you can avoid this problem easily by laying out your job correctly. Here's a schematic for a typical 12 volt constant voltage strip. Each segment comprises three diodes and a current limiting resistor. In theory, if you apply 12 volts DC between the top and bottom rails of this schematic and strip, you could go forever. But nothing is forever. This circuit board is not a perfect conductor. It has a small resistance, and over long distances its effect adds up. Over a simple 5 meter strip, you can see the voltage on some strips drop from 12 volts at the head end by the supply to only 10 volts at the other end. And by ohmic division, the LEDs at the far end have a smaller voltage drop, which means less current and less light. For RGB strip, the red, green, and blue diodes respond differently, and you can even see the color mix may be completely wrong. So how can you avoid that? Simple. Just pin up the voltage where needed. If you were going to design a chairlift at a ski resort, would you put just one set of towers at the bull wheel at the bottom and one at the top? Of course not. The chairlift would probably be laying on the ground in many spots on the way up the mountain. So it is with voltage drop. Simply connect intermediate points to your supply or controlled signal to pin up the signal where it ought to be. You have to make more connections, it's that simple. Let's try a counterexample. Sometimes people think, oh, if I use a more powerful driver, that will fix the problem. That's not true. Look at this example. Here I've created excessive voltage drop by connecting way too much strip in one line. Two reels in this case. Okay, so I see 12 volts at the head end and nine volts at the tail. It's almost dark at the tail. The problem is not that I overloaded the driver, the problem is that I didn't pin up the voltage to avoid voltage drop. I hope you understand now that overloading your driver and failing to account for voltage drop will give you trouble. I also hope you understand that they are very different problems with very different solutions. 
And I hope that you understand how to identify the problem and the solution. We welcome your business at Environmental Lights. If you have any questions about how to achieve success with LED linear lighting, please call and talk with one of our engineers. They're well-trained, friendly, and they have thousands of wonderful products they'd love to show you how to use to great effect.